and Ms. Manga. My name is Su Jinghua from China, Zhuning Longdao Company. And first of all, I'm so excited and very honored to be here today. And my question is, with more and more people focusing on environmental competition protection and the government supporting the new energy industry as well, so what are your thoughts on the continued development of new energy? How may the new energy firm achieve better development in the future? Yeah, well, Greg, I think it's the best to answer that because he, since we bought a company called Mid-American, but now called Berkshire Hathaway Energy, but he's been talking about it yearly, preparing reports, <laughs> hoping that we can help solve a number of the problems, and we probably spent more money than any utility, I'm, I would guess, in the United States. Absolutely. Yep. And, uh, uh, and we've just scratched the surface, but it is not easy when you cross state lines. I mean, it, uh, uh, you've got different jurisdictions, and we should... This country should be ahead of where it is in terms of transmission. and uh, uh, We have been the biggest factor in helping that. Uh, but why don't you tell them a little bit about it? Sure. Thanks, Warren. So there's no question there's an energy transformation going on around the globe. And, and as Warren touched on in the U.S., and in some ways I would hope in, here in the U.S. it would be... Um, we'd at least have a, a, plan, a clear plan across the nation as to how to uh, approach that. But the reality is it is state by state, uh, with some exceptions. But so as a result, when you think of Berkshire Hathaway Energy, we, we own uh, three uh, U.S. utilities there, and, and they'll participate in multiple states. But they're developing plans state by state and then trying to integrate them across the, the various states. The, the opportunities are significant because there is a transformation going on. Uh, we've outlined our goal on, on where we're going relative to carbon at, at BHE, where they'll, by 2030, reduce their carbon footprint by 50% uh, relative to 2005. So that's the Paris Accord and the standard they want to hold the, the utility industry or the utility companies to. And, and we're well on that path, but to achieve it is a true journey. Uh, I've often talked to Warren, when we bought Pacific Corp back in the mid-2000s, we immediately recognized uh, to build a lot of renewable energy like we'd been doing in the Midwest in Iowa, but that was basically in a single state. Now Pacific Corp were in six states. Uh, we started that in the, back in the mid-2000s. Here we are, and we laid out a great transmission plan. Here's how we're going to build it. Here's how we're going to... Uh, effectuated and all the benefits for our customers over that period of time. Here we are in 2023, and we have a little more than a third of that. At the time, it was a $6 billion transmission project. Today, we have a little more than a third of it built, and we've spent probably closer to $7 billion. And it's the right outcome. It's still a great outcome for our customers. But that transmission, you absolutely, as part of the transformation, you absolutely have to build it to remove to move all that renewable energy. And that's sort of the complexity Warren was highlighting. It is a, uh, you, you can't just wake up one day and, and solve this problem. You start with transmission and then you build the resources. But at that same, same company, and if we look at what we're doing across BHE Energy and that energy transformation, we have $70 billion of known projects that are really required to properly serve our customers and achieve that type of energy uh, transformation across those utilities, and that and that's in the coming next in the coming ten years. So, um, we have a team that's absolutely up to the challenge. They're delivering on their commitments, and it's a very, uh, very good business opportunity for for each of our companies and for our shareholders. Because as we deploy that capital, we obviously earn a, a return on equity of it. So, um, but it will be a long journey. It it ha it'll happen over an extended period of time, and it, and the further you get out there, the more dependent it, more dependent upon the uh, the evolution of a variety of technologies that are progressing, but not there yet. So you you you've raised a question. That I want to just take an extra minute yeah. on because it it's so important and. And I don't really know whether our form of government uh, 
is ideal at all in terms of solving uh, the problem you describe. We have solved it one time. In World War II, we took a country that was semi-limping along, and we found ourselves in a world war. And what we did in a world war is we brought a bunch of people to Washington at a dollar a year, you know, whether it was Sidney Weinberg or Goldman Sachs, you, you just name them, and we gave them enormous power to reorient the resources of the United States to face the problem that they faced, which was to create a war machine. And what they did was they found Henry Kaiser, you know, and, and told him to build ships. And they went to the Ford Motor Company and said, you build tanks and some airplanes. And they, they reordered the industrial enterprise of the United States in a way that was unbelievable because they had the power of the federal government and they had the ingenuity of American business. And they had the facilities of American business, and it led to a very successful outcome. But can we do that in a peacetime where you've got 50, 50 states, and you have to get them to cooperate, and you don't have anyone that you can you can issue orders, but you can't you can't designate where the capital goes at the other end. And you know we try and do it with tax incentives and all of that sort of thing, but we haven't. We haven't created the unity of purpose and the machinery that worked in World War II where essentially everybody felt that their one job was to win the war and we figured out how to use our industrial capacity to, uh, in effect, defeat the Axis powers. And uh, uh, how do you recreate that uh, uh, with, you know, the present democratic system. I, I'm not sure I know the answer, but I sure know the problem. But, uh, and I think that if, if you can think of a, if you've got an emergency on your hand, I mean, you really need to re-engineer re the engineer, energy system in the United States. I don't think, I don't think you can do it uh, without something resembling the machinery, the urgency, whatever. The capital is there. Yeah. The people are there. Uh, the, the objective is obvious. And uh, uh, we just don't seem to be able to do it in a peacetime where we're, we're used to following a given set of uh, procedure. And, and, uh, and, you know, China, you've got one country and we've got, we've got 50 states. And we got a whole different system of government. That we should be up to the test, but so far it hasn't worked. But, uh, so thank you for the question.